And join us on the program right now from Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Very pleased to have with us Dr. Tim Wheeler. Dr. Wheeler, thank you for your time, sir. Thanks for having me on, Cam. You bet. Uh, my pleasure to have you here. You know, we, we've talked for years about, uh, you know, the, the issue of uh, uh, doctors asking parents about gun ownership. And, uh, you know, we heard the president actually uh, bring this up again. He, 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 you know, wanted to make clear that uh, doctors can ask uh, their patients, uh, you know, do you own a firearm? How do you store a firearm? And it's been interesting to me to see, Dr. Wheeler, a number of physicians actually pushing back, saying, yeah, I don't necessarily want to do this. I don't think it's necessarily beneficial for me to do this, uh, and I'm not going to. Well, that's right, Cam. And we know from a uh, study, uh, actually a survey that was conducted by the American College of Surgeons and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine back in 1998, I believe, uh, we know that even though doctors do, at least in name, sign on to this idea about guns being a public health problem, et cetera, et cetera, when it came to actually asking their patients in the office about guns, they balked, and only 3% of them said that they did it on a regular basis. And so, yes, you're right. There are many doctors out there who really understand how inappropriate it is to bring a political anti-gun agenda into the relationship uh, that they have with their patients. It's wrong. It's an abuse of their authority, and they're not going to do it. Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, I'm reminded of the, uh, the, the county sheriffs around the country that are also speaking up and saying, you know, we're not going to enforce any uh, unconstitutional laws. We're not going to go after anybody's guns. The, the president himself has said that nothing's going to move through Congress if uh, the American people are not behind this. And so we've seen this sustained, and I think we're seeing the beginning of a sustained public relations campaign here. So it's, it's, it's not just interesting, but I think it's important that here you have members of law enforcement, here you have members of the medical community who are saying, you know, you can disagree with the president here. It doesn't make you a bad doctor. It doesn't make you a bad sheriff. It doesn't make you a bad cop. It doesn't make you a bad parent. Uh, to disagree with the president's policy prescriptions. Yeah, you know, the, the president, uh, we know, has long had an aversion to private gun ownership. We know that uh, when he served in, in the Illinois legislature, uh, he voted for gun control as president. He's been sitting on a, uh, a pent-up demand uh, from his constituency to go after gun owners. And uh, as we well know, um, those of us who have been working on this, this problem since December 14th, uh, the Sandy Hook school shooting, uh, they have pulled out all the stops. They, uh, the, the administration, uh, the anti-gun members of Congress uh, in the state legislatures, we've seen it in New York State, and now we're seeing it uh, develop out here in California. Uh, these folks have been sitting on an anti-gun anti owner agenda for a long time, and now they're pulling out all the stops with all the help that they have from their friends in the media. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, the sheriffs one by one coming out in opposition to these outrageous infringements on gun rights. I'm glad to see doctors uh, for, for once um, starting to um, express their doubts about um, this, this anti-gun agenda in the doctor's office. So now we're starting to see uh, the groundswell of opposition uh, that, of course, the media has not covered over over time we're starting to see that groundswell and we will see it play out in the coming months no i think that you're absolutely right and and so you know one of the things that uh we're, we're going to be hearing a lot about uh gun control advocates uh sort of view this as dogma more guns equals more crime uh, this is sort of the impetus uh, one of the one of the driving factors behind gun control. We heard Senator Feinstein say we want to dry up the supply of these guns over time, presumably uh, seeing a, a gradual decrease in the violent crime rate as these guns dry up and, and, and wither away. But there was a really interesting uh, article in the Richmond Times Dispatch in Virginia a couple of days ago uh, where a, a professor at Virginia Commonwealth University named Thomas Baker uh, looked at uh, and analyzed gun sales in Virginia, violent crime in Virginia, gun-related homicides, gun-related assaults, gun-related suicides, and what he found was, with the exception of firearm-related suicides, at the same time you had an increase in gun sales of about 64 percent, 
Uh, Gun-related homicides fell 37 uh, percent. Uh, uh, you also had uh, firearm-related assaults uh, drop, I believe, 27 uh, percent. Uh, and it was pointed out that the uh, total number of violent crimes dropped 24 percent. And even in the issue of uh, suicides, uh, while the number of suicides in which a firearm was involved increased, the number of suicides in which a rope was involved actually increased at a much greater level during the same time period, leading Professor Baker to say, yeah, I just don't see any correlation or causation there when it comes to suicides. He says that he was surprised. He expected to find that with the increased gun sales, there would be an increase in violent crime. And yet what he found was exactly the opposite. Well, Cam, Professor Baker would not have been surprised at the results of his study if he had become familiar with the uh, well-established criminology literature on this. Uh, homicide and suicide in relation to uh, gun ownership in the community has been studied over and over again for years. And probably the best summary of it that you're going to find for those uh, folks who want to dig deeper into this is uh, Professor Gary Kleck's book, Targeting Guns. That was published back in 1997, uh, and he summarizes the evidence from a, a number of these studies uh, and shows that none of them prove that homicides and uh, overall suicides increase uh, the more firearms are available in the population. It is true, as you said, and as the article says, that gun suicides will increase as the availability to firearms increases, but uh, people, when they're deprived of their firearms, will use other methods of committing suicides, the so-called substitution effect. This has all been well known for years, and it comes as no surprise to anybody who uh, is really familiar with this literature. Talking with Dr. Tim Wheeler with Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. And, uh, you know, Dr. Wheeler, I think, that th I think the surprising thing is, or maybe not surprising, but uh, one of the things to keep in mind is how few people uh, really are familiar with the scholarship that's out there, with the studies that have been done. Uh, you know, one of the other, I think, bits of misrepresentation we're seeing on the part of the media is that the, uh, the NRA has, has blocked any research from being conducted uh, into, you know, gun violence and things of that nature, when in fact uh, it was Congress that put a stop to the CDC funding these uh, junk science studies that were excuses to support gun control. But that doesn't stop, uh, e even, if, even if you want to say that that prevented serious scholarship from being done by the CDC, uh, we certainly have other avenues and other means to conduct research in this country, don't we? We certainly do, and Cam, that is going to be the subject of part three of my series on my website, which is uh, the history of public health gun control uh, for folks who want to look into that. I already talked about how the CDC got its hand slapped back in the 90s uh, for promoting gun control and about how heavily the academic medical community has been involved in promoting uh, gun control. So folks who want to see that uh, on my website um, can go there and, and read a, a quick summary of that. And what, what, what is your website, Dr. Wheeler? It's uh, www.drgo.us. DRGO for Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership.us. Dr. Timothy Wheeler with Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Thank you for your time, sir, and look forward to having you back on soon. Thank you, Cam.